Hello everyone, welcome to this new video in the series of videos in which we are talking about time series analysis in SK time library. Now in this particular tutorial, I would like to start talking about ARIMA models. Now uh, ARIMA models are very vast. So to cover them, I have decided to do a multiple videos on ARIMA models. Okay. But what I want to do is. I want to start talking about some of the background theory that are required to kind of understand the ARIMA models correctly. Because you have to understand auto regressive models, you have to understand moving averages models and also integrated models. So in this particular video and I'm calling this video as a ARIMA models part one video and in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce all of you with these concepts of auto regressive models, moving averages and integrated models. So I'll, I'll just be keeping this video very simple and uh, most probably I will not be using any uh, Jupyter notebook, but to kind of demonstrate some concepts, I might use it. So uh, right now I have not decided whether I'm going to use it or not. So I have prepared these slides to explain you the concepts of uh, the uh, AR, MA and I models. Okay, and the combination of all of these individual components is what is referred to as ARIMA models. Okay, so let's get started. So what do we mean by auto regressive models? So auto regressive or oh sorry, uh, what do we mean by ARIMA models? So ARIMA stands for auto regressive integrated. So AR in ARIMA, the first two letters of ARIMA stands for auto regressive and then we have got I which stands for integrated and then we have got MA which stands for moving averages models. So to understand this whole model, we first need to understand auto regressive models. So let me now move on to the next slide and I will start explaining you what do we mean by auto regressive. All right, so auto regressive part. Now, why do we call this as auto regressive? So there's got to be some reason associated with it. So to understand what do we mean by auto regressive, we first need to understand what do we mean by regressive or regressive in general can be replaced by regression. So you might have heard of this particular concept called regression. And in fact, we have used regression in our previous videos to do uh, time series forecasting using re machine learning regression. Now in regression, what we do is we have some dependent variables and we have some, uh, sorry, we have one dependent variable and we have many independent variables. So what we try to do in regression is we try to regress that dependent variable on many independent variable. And what exactly is the word, uh, is the word, um, what exactly do we mean by regress? So when we say we are regressing a variable on some other variables, what we are essentially trying to say is that we want to predict that variable that we, we are regressing. So when I'm saying I'm regressing sales on advertisement, what does that mean? I, that means I want to make a model which looks like sales is equal to some constant and sales will basically depend on advertisement. So I want to predict sales based on advertisement. So here sales will be my independent variable, whereas on the other hand, advertisement will be my deep, uh, sorry, uh, again, I said, uh, said it wrong. So sales will be my dependent variable, whereas advertisement will be my independent variable. So I'm regressing sales on advertisement. So this, this is what we mean by regression. Now, don't uh, confuse yourself with regression and regressive. So re both are just same. So now what we are doing in uh, time series is we are auto regressing. What do we mean by auto regressing? So now read this line, the current time series data. And when, when I'm seeing current time series data, what I'm trying to say is YT. Now Y stands for the uh, fact that we are representing my, uh, we are representing our time series data as a as a y variable and t stands for timestamp which is which is saying that current timestamp so the current timestamp we will write as the linear combination of previous timestamps so we will say something like yt is equal to some constant let's say beta naught plus beta 1 yt minus 1 
plus beta 2 y t minus 2 and so on up to a certain point of time in the past and that is something that we need to figure out how many values in the past we would like to consider in autoregressive part. So I hope it is clear uh, to you. So to kind of make this concept clear, let me uh, write out something so that I just want to make sure that uh, I'll, I'll not be writing any code as such, but I want to just show you something. And that what is that thing? Let's say, let me make a time series as y, which is which which is a which is just a list. Okay, and do not uh, carefully look at these values. These are just made up values. Now, if I consider this well, this sequence of values as a time series data. So what I'm trying to do in uh, in auto regressive models in auto regressive part is this. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to represent. I'm trying to represent this eight. This eight I'm trying to represent as the linear combination of some past values. Now I'm saying some past values. How many past values? Let us say we are we have decided that we want to consider past let's say we want to consider past six values so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say that eight will be predicted using past six values okay so let me uh okay yeah so one two three four five and six so these six values will be considered to predict the value eight now we we have already realized or we have already seen the actual value of eight but still we will continue this procedure and what we will do is we will write something like beta naught plus beta 1 times now this beta 1 times will happen uh, with 7 plus beta 2 times 6 plus beta beta 3 times and uh, before 6 we have uh, 5 plus so on plus beta 6 times what is the sixth value? It is three. Okay, so this is how I want to predict this eight value. Now you might be saying that why I am again and again saying predict when we already have this value. This is how statistical models are built. Although we have these values, we will still be predicting these this value. Now once we understand the way of prediction of this eight, then what I can do is I can apply the same procedure for predicting the value which will come next which will come after it which we have not realized yet so what i am trying to say is now to predict this question mark what i am going to do is i am going to follow the same exact procedure to take into consideration past six values so i am regressing this unknown value on these past six values and i just need to figure out these beta values and these beta values if you guys are familiar with regression approach these can be computed using uh, least square approach or using some sort of machine learning gradient descent approach okay so the basic idea is just to understand that the current value is being regressed to past some values and how many values that is something that we need to figure out that is also a kind of a hyperparameter. okay so this is the this was the first model so the first model was based on this auto regressive part and in auto regressive the, what is the basic idea the basic idea is that current time series data is regressed to the past lagged values and what do we mean by lagged values let me uh, explain you what do we mean by lagged values so if i write current value as yt what will be the first uh, what will be the uh, value in the past so value in the past will depend on how many uh, how many time stamps in the past i would like to go so i i might go one time stamps in the past i might go two time stamps in the past so this value these all are lagged values this is this is uh, a lagged value of with la lag order of one this is a lagged value of lag order uh, with two Okay, so I hope you get this particular point. So essentially what we do now in this particular model, this beta one, this seven value is essentially a lagged lag of one is a is a value with with, uh, with lag order as one. Whereas this six value is a value with lag order as two. Okay, so this is what we do in auto regressive part. Now let me move on and talk about moving averages part. Now with moving average, the idea is a little bit different with moving average what we do is we say that current value of time series that is current data of time series can be explained by an overall mean plus past unexplained errors what do we mean by this this was auto regressive that is ar okay let me now 
create one more cell now what i can do is i can uh, write if i have to explain it what i can do is i can make a general mean i can calculate a general mean plus so i can calculate the general mean of this time series and then the remaining values will be explained with by the linear combination of past unexplained errors okay so it would be something like beta 1 times error 1 plus beta 2 times error 2 and so on we will go all the way to how many timestamps in the past and that is again the question that we need to figure out so let's again uh, decide that we want to go past 6 values so i'll say beta 6 times error 6 now here i would like to tell you how these errors would be computed these errors are essentially the errors which we would have got uh, if we had fit the model considering the same model so essentially what we are trying to do is so let's 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 uh, for the time being understand that we know these errors so if we know these errors and these beta values then we will get some some value of uh, out of this uh, whole equation now let us say we get a value of 8.9 but actual value is 8 so what is the error that error is 0 0.9 so now what will happen is to predict this question mark the previous error will be considered and that previous error is what previous error we have just seen which, uh, that is 0 0.9 and similarly we could find the previous error for this 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 and each previous errors we can find so essentially we take the, this general mean and we take the linear combination of the previous errors previous unexplained variations okay so this was moving average model now let me explain you the concept of integrated models okay so what do we mean by integrated models or integrated time series data now in my previous lectures i talked about the concept of stationarity of time series and what do we mean by stationarity let me repeat uh, that again stationarity means a time series is said to be stationary time series if its properties is its statistical properties do not change as we move along in the future in the time so let me repeat uh, that again so as we move into the future the properties of statistical properties of time series does not change so this is what i mean by stationarity so such time series data will be known as stationary time series data and it has always been seen by statisticians that it is very easy to work with such type of data because there are many different types of assumptions which are made before modeling the data and one of such assumption is of stationarity so when stationarity's assumption is uh, fulfilled then it is very easy to model time series data but if the time series data is not stationary how can can i make it stationary so that it would be very easy for us to model that uh, time series so the way is to take differences what do we mean by differences so let me uh, continue with this example only right now i don't know whether this time series is stationary or not but for the timing let's uh, say that this time series is stationary what do we mean by that that means its statistical properties like mean and variance will remain constant as we move along uh, the time in the future but if this time series is not stationary what i can do is i can check i can check i can calculate the first order difference and what do we mean by first order difference what i will do is i will take a difference of this 2 and 1 i'll write the difference as 1 okay now i will take the difference of 3 and 2 i'll take uh, i'll write uh, 1 then i will take the difference of 4 and 3 and i'll write 1 again and then 5 and 4 which is 1 again then 5 and 5 0 then 6 and 5 negative uh, 1 7 and 6 1 8 and 7 1 so now what we have got is we have got a first difference so this we will call as first difference now suppose our original time series which is y was not stationary suppose i have not checked it yet but still for the time being let's suppose let's assume that this y was non-stationary but it turns out that when we take the first difference it becomes stationary if it happens i i do not i do not know whether this is happening in this particular data or not but if this does happen with this particular data then we will call this y as i 
one model i i one model where whereas this one represents the first order because we just took first difference first order difference and this time series became uh this time series became what this time series became stationary then what do we call a already stationary time series data now suppose that y was already a stationary time series data then i would call it as i zero models okay i integrated zero models because they are already stationary there is no need to take difference but what if this first difference is also not stationary then i will take second difference okay and second difference would be 0 0 0 0 0 and then i will say if this second difference turns out to be stationary if the if neither y original time series or nor this first difference is uh, stationary then we will check for the second difference and if second difference turns out to be stationary i will call this uh, model as i2 model what i2 model is representing is that, that, that when we take the second order difference of my original time series then the original time series uh, data turns into the uh, stationary time series and with stationary time series i can do my auto regressive and moving averages models so i hope this small discussion made sense so let me move back to the slide so this is what we mean by integrated time series data so a stationary time series data is i0 process as i have just mentioned uh, it, it few slides back now if a time series data is non stationary but their first order difference is stationary then that is called i1 process okay again in general if the original time series is non stationary but the rth order difference is stationary then it is called as ir process so i hope this small discussion on ar ma and integrated models makes sense because i am going to uh, stop this video right here because I do not want to unnecessarily uh, extend this video for uh, over a certain uh, period of time and um, what I want all of you to do is I want all of you to just make sure that you understood these three concepts okay and in the next video what we are going to do is we are going to combine these three concepts to learn about ARIMA models essentially ARIMA models uh, are just the uh, combination of these three individual uh, components and once we understand that we will be implementing uh, arima models and uh, more precisely auto arima class models using sk time library so with that said uh, if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and uh, i feel that uh, it is really encouraging for us as a you know creator as a course creator if someone uh, considers uh, giving it a thumbs up so it it uh, gives that boost to continue creating more uh, content okay so with that said i would like to stop this video and i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching the content have a nice day